Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back again with the book, The Devil's Deception. This time, you're going to learn about how deceptive, how patient Shaitan is, how he gets you to do things which you think nothing about, how then eventually it could lead to something which is very major. So let's read. Pages 70 to 73, we learn about a worshipper. This worshipper was dedicated to worship, and he was from Bani Israel, and he was very well known around his place, his city, where he was from. And when the brothers of a sister were called to battle. They were like, well, who do we leave our sister with? And they went to the worshipper and left her with him because they trusted him. Initially, the worshipper said, I seek refuge with Allah from the sister. The brothers insisted until they convinced him. He said, right, place her in a house near my monastery. The brothers then left for battle. For some time thereafter, the worshipper used to bring her food from his monastery, leave it at his doorstep and close the door. And then the devil told him, it's not appropriate for the girl to leave her house during the day. Somebody might see her. So then the worshipper began taking it to her house and leaving the food outside her doorstep without talking to her. This continued for some time. Then the devil came to him again and said to him, take it and leave it inside the room. And this happened for a while until the devil came back to him again and said, talk to her, keep her company. She's lonely. She's got nobody. Her brothers are gone. So then he would talk to her from his monastery. And this continued for some time. The devil then came to him again and said, It would be better if you come down from your monastery and talk to her, and go to her house. This would make her feel even less lonely. So he did. And this continued for a while. The devil then came to him again and convinced him to come nearer to the doorstep so she would have to sit outside her house talking to him. And he did just that. And this happened for some time, until the devil came to him again and said that enter her house. So that nobody sees her at all. So now it's just him and the sister alone in the house. So he began visiting the entire day. The devil continued to beautify her in the eyes of the worshipper until he touched her thigh and kissed her. They then had sexual relations with each other and he got her pregnant and she delivered a boy. The devil came to him again and said, When the brothers come back and find out that they've had a child, that the sister's had a child, they'll realise what's happened and you will become defamed. So kill the baby. And she won't reveal what happened because she'd fear her brothers. So the worshipper killed the baby. The devil then came to him afterwards and said, Do you think she's going to keep quiet? You've just killed her child. You have to kill her now. And he did just that. He buried her and covered the grave with a big rock. He then returned to his monastery to worship. The brothers then came back after some time and inquired about their sister. The worshipper simply said she'd passed away. The brothers were devastated. They mourned and remarked how she was a great woman. The worshipper pointed out the grave and the brothers visited the grave and they mourned their sister asking for her forgiveness. They stayed for a few days and then left. The devil then came to the brothers and made them see a dream. In that dream they were told that the worshipper had killed their sister and the proof was that she was buried in a different location. When the brothers woke up they conferred with each other and they all confirmed that they had the same dream. So then they thought right let's confirm if this dream is true or not. They went to the location where the worshipper said the grave was and they found it empty. They then went to the place in their dream and uncovered the grave and they found the dead body of their sister along with that of a child. So they went to the worshipper and forced him to disclose what had happened and he did. He was then taken to the king's court and given the punishment of execution. Whilst the worshipper was being dragged to his execution, the devil came to him and said, Listen, I'm the devil. It was me who was in communication with you since this whole thing started and not your inner thoughts. Now, I can get you out of this trouble if you want. I am the one who put you in this and I can get you out of it. The worshipper said, how? He said, prostrate to me and I will save you. The worshipper then prostrated, you know, worshipped the devil. And as soon as he did that, the devil ran away and the worshipper was executed. This is a very powerful story and we can learn a lot from it. Look at how it started. It was harmless. He would leave food. On the doorstep, she would come out and she would get it. That's it. Nothing wrong in that. But then temptations, temptations, and slowly he built it up to the point where what? They had sexual relations. And then what happened? He killed and committed murder. And then what happened? He then prostrated to shaitan. He worshipped shaitan. And he died upon that. But all this happened because he kept listening to the waswas, listening to shaitan. And something which he thought nothing of became something very, very major. And ultimately, that's an act that leads you to the hellfire. Dying upon worshipping other than Allah. 
He was a man who was pious. He was a worshipper. He was well known. He was renowned for his piety. Yet look how he ended up. It shows you a couple of things. One, Shaitan is manipulative. He's patient. He will pick things off at, one at a time. I'm going to leave a lecture in the description for you. We can learn about the plan of Shaitan. Why it is weak. What he wants you to do. And then inshallah from this lecture I do recommend you watch it. It's very good. You can then implement the lessons and the teachings from it in your life. We learn that shaitan, he will make you do things which are insignificant. And then slowly, it's like a domino effect. If you keep listening, it falls down, falls down until you commit big issues, big sins. Acts of kufr, acts of shirk. We also learn it's not about who you are now, it's about how you end up. You could be living a life of sin, but then if you turn back to Allah once, you repent and you get your life in order and you strive and you die upon that. Inshallah, Allah will forgive you and he will enter you into paradise. On the other hand, you could be a man who's great. He's praying all the salah in the masjid. He's praying tahajjud every single day. He's constantly turning back to Allah. And then towards the end, he commits acts like the worshipper did. Shirk kufr, you know, worshipping other than Allah, prostrating in worship to other than Allah. And that ultimately will lead someone to the hellfire. So the lesson to take from this is that something which you might think is insignificant is in fact significant because it's a domino effect. Cut things out from the root and be patient, strive against yourself, turn to Allah, ask Allah for help and inshallah Allah will help you. In the Quran Allah tells us that shaitan is an enemy so it's important you learn about the tactics of your enemy, the greatest enemy to us all and that's why I recommend that book, The Devil's Deception. And I recommend you watch the lecture in the description. Thank you all for watching. Inshallah you found it beneficial. And I'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.